How can white unschooling families best support and make space for black unschooling families without being intrusive? Fear of the Free Child is a weekly podcast that centers diverse narratives, insightful commentary, learning with our children and de-schooling ourselves, owning our multiple identities and treating children with dignity, creating community and sharing conversation from often silenced spaces, breathing life into liberation practices proactively and on purpose. It's about parenting. It's about self-directed education, loving. It's about learning, liberatory practices, defining love for ourselves and giving our love to as much of the world as it can possibly contain. Let's find each other. Let's support each other. All of these stories are important and should be shared. One of the benefits of becoming my patron is that I invite you to ask me specific questions, and then I answer them here on the podcast. And I'm um, saying your name with your permission. And Amy Carpenter, one of my wonderful patrons, peace, Amy, what up? <laughs> Asked a question that I'm happy to answer here. Amy's question is, how can white unschooling families best support and make space for black unschooling families without being intrusive? And I think this is it lends itself to the, the larger question about how white people can be supportive of people of color without being intrusive, right? It, it's all connected. So I have some specific responses here. And then also, interestingly, the next episode, the episode right after this one with Julia and Anthony over at Hartwood ALC, they started an agile learning center in Metro Atlanta in Clarkston. Julia is a white woman and Anthony is a black man. And we had a really, really, really insightful conversation around this sort of thing, among other really interesting topics. So that's going to speak a lot to your question too, Amy, because we spoke specifically about that. And then of course, I want you to understand that black people are not a monolith, right? So my responses are based on my experiences but talk to another black person or a brown person, and they may have very different responses. So it's very important to understand that, of course, this is personalized. It's still going to be incredibly helpful, I think, but I want you to continue to ask other people of color this question as well. The first thing <laughs> is to check your defensiveness. I think that it's normal that any of us have a knee-jerk reaction to things that sting. Right. So when people say things that highlight the things that we might feel bad or guilty about, it's really easy to try and defend it. So one thing white people can do to support and make space for black and brown people overall, and particularly in the unschooling space, is to stop doing that. Leave your hurt feelings for, I don't know, your journals or your mama or somebody else. But in conversation with us, listen and process what you're hearing without explaining why you feel that way. And the reason I say that is because, remember, we as people of color spend our entire lives being required to understand and study whiteness, white feelings, white perspectives, white narratives, all of that. You are the one who now has an opportunity to explore our perspectives. So try to let your conversations with us be about that. We don't need to understand you in order for racist realities to be dismantled. It's you that needs the practice understanding us outside of the fear and the anti-black, anti-brown focus that media, school curricula, and all of that has been perpetuating for literally hundreds of years. So that's the first thing, to really check your defensiveness. The second thing is to check your friends when they make racist comments. Some of your friends probably don't give a shit about what I think, but they might care what you think. So when a friend says something about black or brown people that makes you feel some type of way, say so out loud. And I'm not saying to bash them verbally. Certainly you can do it from a space of compassion and even respect, but don't be complicit by being silent is what I'm saying here. Say to them how their words are rooted in something racist. Give them an opportunity to face that. So another thing white people can do to support and make space for black and brown families is to speak up about racist mindsets, 
because your words might actually reach some folks that our words probably won't. Another thing is don't assume that black and brown people aren't centering love. This is a major one for me. So many of us who do this work out loud are labeled as angry. I'm sure you've heard the angry black woman sentiment or the angry black man. (laughs) And I can't tell you how many times a seemingly well-meaning white person has offered me the solace of love and tolerance and compassion as solutions or, or maybe just salves from my experience. Don't do that, please. It's incredibly offensive. I can be loving and compassionate and still be sick and tired of being targeted and hurt because I am black. I can be tolerant and compassionate and still be furious at the reality that my children aren't safe simply because of the color of their skin or the kink in their hair. So when you say things like love conquers all, you speak from a place that severely lacks the realistic idea that love doesn't save my people from your people. Also, when you say things like that, you're defining love as something that you get to characterize and that I should aspire to based on how you see it. Because we don't need to be reminded how to love. We love all the time. We just want equal access and safe spaces in the room to build what we need without racism coming in to destroy what we are and what we have. Because historically, that's what whiteness has done. And we were never loveless during any of that. We just won't sit silently while those things happen. And that lack of silence isn't hate. It isn't the opposite of love. It's our human instinct to nurture and protect ourselves. And when you view that as not enough love or not enough tolerance, that's really your work to do. It isn't something that you need to offer us because we're we're perfectly capable and well-practiced in love. And the final thing that I have to offer here is to ask individuals, okay? As I mentioned at the beginning, asking individual settings because there isn't one overall right answer here. We are vast and varied, just like you're not the same as every other white person you know, Amy. I'm not the same as every other black person that I know or you know. So in your efforts to support black and brown unschooling families, ask the ones that you interact with. I appreciate that you asked me, for sure. And I hope that my responses incite some action. And one of those actions that I hope it incites is that each time you connect with a black or brown unschooling family, ask how you can support them and be willing to follow their lead. Be willing to be uncomfortable and to risk sounding however you think you might sound when you ask questions. Those are some of the things that I think white people can do to be more supportive of black and brown families in any space, including the unschooling space. And I want to end with a shout out to my two newest patrons over at patreon.com forward slash Akila. Sonia, I appreciate you. We've been talking on a few mediums and I'm so looking forward to getting to know more about what you're doing in this space. Amy, I appreciate you so much. You also reached out on Facebook. And Nakima, I know I gave you a shout out last time, but I want to do it again just because. (laughs) So thank you so much to all of you. You're my newest patrons. And while I'm here and I have this in front of me, let me shout out my existing patrons as well. Ariel, LaRonda, Katrina, Freedom, Julie, Liam, Jennifer, and Thomas. Thank you so much. I now have some help with editing the episodes, which is such a freaking relief. And it's given me an opportunity to really look at ways to broaden this work. I want to do some more traveling while I'm here on this side of the world. And you're helping me to make that a reality. So thank you for all of you, all 11 of you. And I encourage anybody who's listening, who is not a patron, if you are in a position to do anything from $3 a month or a one-time donation of $3, to $3,000 a month, shout it. Do it over at patreon.com forward slash Akila. Thanks for listening to Fair the Free Child podcast. 